Hello, welcome to part four of my uh, synthesis series of videos. Uh, so we're now going to look at the uh, the amp section. So the amp in its basic form uh, basically is going to control the volume of our synthesizer. Um, we're also going to be looking at the amp envelope as well, which is basically what we would use to shape the volume of the sound over the over time using um, the, the envelope. So first of all, if you just look at um, analog, so if I'm just playing a bit of that there. Uh, this is the amp section. Uh, I'm just going to turn the oscillator 2 off. So we're just going to just looking at the top row here. So I've got the oscillator which we've looked at in previous videos and the filter. So this is the amp section. If I turn the amp off, we're not going to hear anything. OK, so it needs to pass through the amp. So here is the basic bit of the amp. We can pan it from left to right and we have a volume. OK, so in the same way as if we look over here on the camera on the micro group, uh, we've got the master volume here. So that kind of like is the same bit as this. OK, and then we have controls for the amp in here. If we go over to the Tel Electro, which we're also looking at, um, the mixer is kind of like part of the amp section and the envelopes for it are here. So here we have our volume controls for our different oscillators. Uh, what I'm going to do on the, I'll just leave that as it is for now. Um, OK, so that's our kind of, rather than having an overall volume on this, we've got the overall volume here, then we've got a volume for the separate oscillator as well. So this volume dial here is basically the same as this. Can't see it if I do it that way. So it's the same as this one on um, the micro brute, and it's the same as this one on the analog uh, synth. Um, we could also, I'm just going to stick a simpler in because I think you will, I think, because you know you don't get analog with some of the, the lower versions of, uh, of live, but I think you always get simpler. And uh, we can demonstrate some stuff on that as well. I'm just going to stick a pad in here. Uh, we'll just stick that in there for now. Um, and if we go into the controls, okay, so we have an envelope and an amp section here. Okay, so here we, again we have the volume and this bit going down here. So I'll, I'll look at um, all the all these different options so you can sort of see the differences between them. Now, if we want to change that volume over time, obviously we could play a note. Let me just get this on here. I'm going to do it on here. Um, hold on, we've got weird LFO stuff going off. Let me just get the LFO turned down. Okay, now if I want a note to sort of fade in, I could do it with the volume switch. Okay, and go up to full volume. Now, yeah, great, but I don't want to have to do that all the time every time I play a note. So that's where our amp envelopes come in that we use to shape our uh, the volume of the sound over time. So an amp envelope is... It can be less sections, but generally it's going to be split into four sections. We've got attack, decay, sustain, and release, and that is known as ADSR. So if I just quickly go through, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the different sections and, and what they mean. So you can see here we've got attack, decay, sustain, and release. And basically this little graphic here will change depending on the settings that we have in here. So this is quite useful to actually visualize the uh, the envelope of what it sounds like. Now, the envelope here, you've got two different settings. We can have it on exponential, which is what it's on at the moment, which gives us sort of these curved lines, okay? We can also have linear, which gives it more um, linear lines, for a better description, but you can hopefully you can see the difference that it's kind of like all straight lines rather than curved. So I'm actually going to leave it on the linear one because it, it's um, a bit easier to kind of understand what's happening uh, with it on linear rather than exponential. So, attack, so this is a time-based parameter, and this is basically how quickly the sound reaches full volume after we hit a key on the keyboard. So at the moment, we've got basically no attack. I know it's at five milliseconds there, but that's as low as it will go on this. So when I hit a key on the computer keyboard, Okay, it instantly reaches full volume. Now, if we want that sound to fade in, we would give it a longer attack time. So I can change it on here. Okay, I can move it along, and you hopefully you can see this is moving as I do increase this. So if I take that to, let's say, just about two and just under three seconds, you can see that's now changed. So here is zero volume, here is full volume. So between there and there, okay, it's going to take now three seconds for it to reach full volume. Okay, so it's now reached up at full volume. Okay, 
and we have the same thing on let's do it on the uh sorry i keep knocking my camera cable here which is probably really annoying to watch uh so we've got the same thing on here we've got attack decay sustain release now if we have it on sort of on its with no uh kind of envelope affecting it it's basically attack decay and release are down at zero and we would have full sustain and that's basically just giving us what's called note on note off so you can hear when i press my finger on the key it sounds at full volume. The second I take my finger off, it stops. We have got a bit of reverb on that, which I will just get rid of. Um, if I can remember which channel that's going on, just give me a sec. Because otherwise that's going to confuse us with our, there we go, that's better, with our uh, release times, etc. Um, so if I give that now some attack, let's just put the attack right the way up to the top on here. Okay, we can hear the note now fades in. And that basically is the same on all of these. If I on this one, because we've got no attack, no decay, and no release, sustains up at full. Let's turn the attack up. Okay, you can hear it fading in. And if we do it on here, um, here is our attack. We've got the dials down here. So you can see, again, this is like an exponential curve on here, but uh, let's just activate this one. Okay, so you can see that our volume is just gradually going up like that. Okay, so the attack, as we said, is a time-based parameter and it's how long it takes for the sound to reach full volume after we've pressed a note on the keyboard. So the second one, the D part, is decay. Again, a time-based parameter. This is the time it takes for the sound to reach the sustain level. Okay, after it's reached full volume. So if we look at this envelope here, this is the sustain volume. Now you're going to hear this easier if I take this right down. Okay, the state sustain is right down there because what basically the sustain is a volume parameter. And that's the volume that the sound will stay at when you hold your finger down on the keyboard. Okay, so you can see it's going to take, let's just have a slightly quicker attack so it's going to take what have we got here 196 milliseconds to go from zero to full volume it's then going to take 351 milliseconds to drop down to the sustain level and i've just realized i'm playing the wrong one which is why it's not doing it it should be that one okay so you can hear it goes let's just make those a bit longer so you can hear it Okay, that's press a bit long. I'm just going to take that sustain right the way down. So what's happening is I press my finger here and the sound's going up and then down there like that. Let's just make that attack a little bit longer. Okay, make the delay a bit longer. Okay, sorry. Okay, now obviously if we've got full sustain volume, right, the decay is not going to have any, any effect Okay, because it's just going up to the full volume. So if we think of something like, say, a drum hit, that would have a basically an instant attack and a very quick delay down to like a zero sustain level. If I change this to a noise, okay, so that's kind of like a sort of a snare drum kind of thing. Okay, got instant attack straight down to zero um, sustain, and then generally it would have zero release as well. Well, it would have a bit of release depending on how dampened your drums are. So different instrument sounds are going to have different envelope shapes to them. Okay, so hopefully you're with me so far. Uh, same thing on, on all the others. It's exactly the same. So if we turn the sustain down on here to say there, and then we'll have a decay up there. We'll turn the attack down a little bit. Okay, hold on. Let's just turn that off. Attack up a bit. Okay, and then it's down to the sustain level. Now, obviously, if sustain is down at zero, what's up in there? Disappeared for some reason. Let's turn the sustain all the way down. If you watch actually the volume uh, meter here, you'll see it go up to full volume and then down to zero on the sustain. So it's going up to full and then it's dropping back down again to sustain. So it's basically. All an envelope does is it's automating the, the volume dial. So at the moment, it's kind of turning it up and turning it down. Okay, so the last one is release. This is how quickly the note 
fades out to silence once you have taken your finger off the key. Okay, and again, it's a time based parameter. So let's just give this a bit more sustain because if we've got no sustain, we're not going to hear it. I'm going to just take the decay down. So, and in fact, we'll make a shorter attack. Okay, at the moment we have no release. So the second I release that key, you can hear, you know, it stops, right? If we give it a long release, do the same thing. Okay, when I release it, the sound now fades out. And again, that's going to be de determined on how many seconds or milliseconds your release is set to. So let's just do it on this. Just swap it around. On this organ, because this is going to have a better release thing. Right, so at the moment, release is very short. So if we give it a long release of about five seconds, so when I let go, which is now, okay, you can hear it fading away. So we can have it fade in. which is a bit long, and then fading out. Okay, and obviously we could take the sustain down, so it will fade down to sustain level, and then it will ring on. And it's just really, that's why I wanted to show you on analog and also on simpler, because when you've not got the visual representation of you as you, for your envelope as you have on this, which we've not got on this one, sorry, I can't get my words out, uh, sometimes it's hard to kind of visualize it. So you just got to remember, that's time, that's time. Sustain is a volume amount, and that is time and it's the same over on here okay a tactic case sustain release so pretty much all synths will have um basically an adsr uh setting um there's another couple of cool things actually on analog we have we can actually loop the uh the amp envelope which is quite cool which is here the moment it's set to off um what sound have we got on here at the moment okay so and you've got various options. So here, what will happen is the ADR, that will loop the attack and the decay stage. So it's kind of, will kind of loop around here. And then when you take your finger off, it'll jump to the release stage. So if we do that and we, uh, let's just, and it will, it, depending on the amounts we've got here. So if we take that right down, hopefully you can hear that's now giving That, you get that kind of nice rhythmical kind of, almost like an LFO. Okay, so if you've got the uh, short decay time, you're not going to hear it much, but a long decay time. Okay, so they're quite cool. Uh, okay, so that's basically sort of covered the, uh, the amp envelope. Again, I hope that makes some sort of sense. Um, it's pretty straightforward once you get your head around it. It's, it's just kind of imagining like how you would be turning a volume dial up so let's say we wanted kind of like a slow attack up to full volume and then a long release it would basically the envelope is doing this with your volume dial let me just adjust that camera so you can actually see me turning that up right so this would be the attack time Okay, so let's say we had a decay down to a sustain level of, say, there. And then, if you imagine I've now taken my finger off the key, which I can't do, otherwise it will stop. But then your release time would be kind of like that. So it's basically, all it is, it's automating the volume dial in simple terms. Um, right, so yeah, again, hopefully that was of some use and that makes some sense to you. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the box below, usual sort of thing. Please like, subscribe, share the videos around, check my music out on Spotify or iTunes or whatever your uh, choice of digital um, music consumption is, because uh, any streams that you put through there all help me to uh, make a few more pence and uh, keeps the channel going. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next part. Cheers.